Joining me now, Jeremy Salant, former assistant district attorney in the Manhattan DA's trial division, and Andrew Fleischman, a criminal defense attorney based in Atlanta. Good evening to both of you. Thank you for uh, being here tonight. You know, I think the point, uh, Andrew, is that we think of these these procedural things, these motions, these decisions by judges as being a win for one side of the uh, or the other. Um, it looks interesting that that Fonnie Willis gets to stay on this trial uh, on this case. But is 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 she damaged by this? Yeah. I mean, you see in the judge's order him saying, maybe I don't disqualify her, but the state bar could do something. Fulton County could do something. Legislators could do something. So this is not only a finding that she was potentially dishonest in this case, but an invitation for investigations from other parts of the state. What, what do you make of that, Jeremy? The, the idea that the, the judge did sort of imply that maybe the Trump team can get a gag order against her. He, he's implied in several places that while there was no finding that this in, improper, this relationship was inappropriate and, con, and, and, and created a conflict in the case, he had a lot to say about her. Absolutely. And, and it's more than a hand slap. What she's doing, he's, he's exonerating her from the allegations and he's making it very clear it did not exist. Right. That being said, th that appearance has that stench, that odor, which you heard. And that's enough. And saying to, to uh, D.A., um, that, you know, you can't do this. You can't pursue this. You can't use those words. You cannot act in this way. And you have to remove Wade. Otherwise, that appearance is going to maintain in the public. And a reasonable public has to be able to say we have faith in the criminal justice system. Right. And that cannot exist the way you are maintaining yourself. So it was strongly worded and, and more than just a slap on the wrist, but an exoneration at the same time. Andrew, what do you make of it? What, what happens to this case? What are the things that, that the people watching tonight have to think about in terms of how this case moves forward and what happens next? The next step is probably that Ashley Merchant and Steve Sada with the attorneys on the case will ask for a certificate of immediate review that has to happen in 10 days. At that point, assuming it's granted, the Court of Appeals will decide whether or not they want to take the case. We'll know that in a matter of weeks. On whether this is an exoneration, I don't think it is. The judge said there might not be enough evidence to prove they actually had a relationship before 2022. But that odor of mendacity line suggests that he thought the evidence might support that the witnesses were lying. Uh, I feel like it's far from an exoneration. It's a pretty serious allegation in this order. The, you know, in terms of an exoneration, the big key here is not so much what was said and what wasn't said. It's the fact that this case can continue. Fulton County still has this case. D.A. Willis still has this case. It can still proceed. It is not dismissed. And there are other grounds that were challenged. So by an exoneration, this is saying to the people of Fulton County, this is saying to D.A. Willis, you can move forward. You've made mistakes. But to, to his point, I, I agree. By no means is she out of the, out of the woods right. here. But the big picture is there is a RICO case against the former president of the United States for tampering with the Georgia election. Right. Is that stopping? Absolutely not. That's moving forward. So, Andrew, all the way to the point where there are jurors, um, how does this get handled? I mean, politically, there's whatever's going on. But for a juror, they have to listen to the case, the indictments and the facts presented and the defense. How does any of this affect how that moves forward? I honestly don't think it'll have much impact on jurors. I mean, we do voir dire. We try to make sure people don't have too strong an opinion. We, we throw out the crazies on both sides, and we hope the people in the middle are reasonable. And generally, they are. I think we'll be able to find a jury in this case who can try to disregard allegations from both sides and focus on the evidence. Uh, Jeremy, let's talk about this idea that Donald Trump goes against his, you know, goes after his prosecutors. He goes after most judges, uh, except in the Mar-a-Lago uh, case. Does this kind of thing have an effect? This was didn't actually come from Donald Trump. The the allegations against Fonnie Willis uh, came from one of the co-defendants uh, who was sort of a uh, who digs up dirt on people. Um, he got charged and he decided to dig up dirt on Fonnie Willis. What's the effect this has on prosecutors, on DAs, the, 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 that threat environment? You know, you have to have a wall that put yourself aside from and away from that outside force. And it's sometimes very difficult, especially when it comes in the form of not just words, but it comes in the form of, of a white powder delivery we hear about. It comes in the form of actual threats. It's really despicable and deplorable. But at the same time, a, a prosecutor understands that it's not an easy job and you don't take a case because it's an easy case. You take it because you believe that's what justice requires. So I think that they're still going to march forward and do what they need to do. They're going to continue whatever they need to investigate. And Donald Trump will always be there sort of rabble-rousing, to put it nicely, 
the worst thing that he is doing is not necessarily to the prosecutors. I think he, the worst thing he's doing is to all of us in, in the entire United States to really diminish the judiciary, to diminish the criminal justice system, to cause people to have doubt all of the time. That's really terrible for all of us and for people who believe in a fair trial. So, yes, prosecutors are going to have that in their mind, but they're going to wall that off and, and they're going to move forward. This is what justice requires. Let's talk about uh, the DA, uh, Andrew. It's an elected position. The governor of Georgia Georgia has uh, introduced a bill to deal with what he calls rogue local prosecutors. Um, Fonnie Willis is up for election in November. We interviewed just a handful of people. Um, they have different opinions on how this would affect their, their decision to vote. But what, what, what does that environment do to this case, the, the stuff that the governor's doing, the, um, the idea that Fonnie Willis is elected, not an appointed uh, DA? Well, I mean, you've seen how those politics play out in the courtroom. You saw Fonnie Willis testify in that defiant and unprofessional way, as described by the judge, because she was appealing to voters. Having those political concerns is sort of poison to the sort of due process you want in a case. And that's going to be keep on happening, right? Donald Trump is going to say stuff. Fulton County is going to want to respond. And this election environment makes it harder to have a trial that doesn't raise doubts in the mind of voters that this is a fair process. What do we think about these gag orders? Scott Mask McAfee, the judge, suggested they, the, the Trump team might uh, find a gag order uh, suitable against Fonnie Willis. Fonnie Willis has been encouraged in many cases to get a gag order against Trump for some of the things that he says about her. Tell me about that environment. I, I think that any prosecutor should take a lesson from Jack Smith. And that is, you stick to what's in that indictment and you stick to that courtroom. There's no reason to play this out in the media. That's not what this is about. So I think, frankly, a gag order on all parties, assuming that it can be limited in a way that doesn't impact your ability to defend yourself and pursue your case, is really something that's valuable because there's so many distractions we don't need to hear. The public doesn't need to hear. None of us need to listen to. And it, it's something that's very unfortunate, but the gag order, especially as he becomes more bombastic and we're getting closer to the election, is necessary. But that doesn't mean that, that Willis is immune from it either. She should be not being out there on the stoop, if you will, doing the same but different thing as the former president. So I think a gag order may be appropriate as long as it's you know, made in a very limited way. Let's talk about the actual case, Andrew. Uh, Judge McAfee uh, got rid of some of the charges. It's still, uh, there's still a lot of charges there. Is the case uh, looking as strong as it was before all of this started happening? Yeah, I mean, that special demur, granted because these charges were not specific enough, only went to six counts that are already part of the RICO charge. They're gonna talk about the exact same evidence of trial as they would have without that order. And then on top of it, the sentencing exposure is basically the same. So it doesn't affect the case in any meaningful way. Guys, thanks very much. It's a more complicated issue than it looked like on the surface, and I appreciate the analysis from both of you. Jeremy Saland is a former assistant district attorney in the Manhattan DA's trial division. Andrew Fleischman is an Atlanta criminal defense attorney. We thank you both for your time.